Hey, this is Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Agriculture Communication, and we're going to talk about creating a Twitter account for professional use, and hopefully we'll get you started and through the process in really just a very few minutes uh, on how to create a Twitter account. So, you're going to start by opening a browser. I have Mozilla Firefox open here. You could use Internet Explorer, you could use Google Chrome, you can use Safari, any web browser will work. And all you need to do is go to the Twitter website. Now you can just Google Twitter and click on the link, or you can uh, go up in your address bar and type www.twitter.com. And that's going to take you to the Twitter welcome page. And this is what the welcome page looks like. You can see here you've got a sign in area here. If you already have an account, you can use your username or email and password to sign into your Twitter account. But we're creating a new account. So down here you'll see where it says new to Twitter. This is the sign up area. And it starts with putting in your full name. Now, this is a professional account, right? So we're going to want to use our name as we would use it uh, professionally. Now, you're probably noticing this is not my name, but uh, I already have a Twitter account under my name, so I'm going to use a different name here to create this account and show you how to do it. The next thing that you need is an email address. Um, Twitter limits uh, the number of accounts uh, per email address to one. So one email address, one account. You can't use the same email address for multiple accounts. So this will have to be a unique email address that has not been used for a Twitter account before. And then finally you put in a password. Again, you should use a secure password that will not be easily hacked. Capital letters, some numbers, maybe even a special character. Give you a nice strong password that uh, won't be compromised. That's all you need. And then you click this sign up for Twitter button and this is the next screen that you get here we see our name we see our email address we see our password it says the passwords okay and then here right here where it says McLuhan dark fold no spaces that's the suggested username now this one happens to be available if your name's John Smith it's not going to be available uh, John Smith as a username but uh, Twitter will suggest some alternatives that you could use. I think it's important when you're using it professionally to use a Twitter username, and we call it a handle, that's as close to your actual name as possible. Um, I've sort of broken this rule with my own account years ago when I created my account. Uh, I used the username NDBob, and it has some of my name in there, but it's not clear when you see that, oh, this is Bob Birch, the guy from NDSU Ag Communication. So you might want to make sure that uh, you are clearly identified uh, as as yourself with your username as close as possible giving the limitations that uh, your name might be taken as a Twitter handle already okay so a couple other things that you can do on this particular page one is uh, you can uncheck or leave checked these two boxes one is says keep me signed in on this computer that can be a security risk especially if you're on a public computer or if you're on a computer that other people are going to be using you don't want when they open up a browser for them to be signed into your Twitter account so you may want to uncheck that the other thing you might want to uncheck is Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits. This is where Twitter looks at your web traffic and tries to suggest Twitter accounts for you to follow based on the kinds of sites uh, you go to. It's up to you whether you want to keep that checked or not. It does, if you leave it checked, it does uh, let Twitter sort of look at your web traffic at, for this specific uh, purpose. Uh, that's up to you. I'm going to uncheck it just to kind of show you what that looks like when you do uncheck it. And then the last thing is just to review the terms of service. Make sure that you're okay with uh, everything that's that's in here. And once you have done that, then you can go ahead and click uh, create my account. So now we've gotten to the point where we've created our account and uh, Twitter is going to walk us through the rest of this process. Um, and so all you need to do to do that is click the next button here and Twitter's going to take you to a screen where it's asking you to follow people and you're not going to be able to move on from this until you follow three people. Now you can follow some of the suggestions here uh, that Twitter suggests for you or you could search for particular people that you want to follow. If you're not sure yet who you want to follow, just follow some of the people that Twitter suggests for you and you can always unfollow them later. It's very easy to do. So I'm just going to follow anybody here. 
uh, in the Twitter suggested link or list, I should say, because I'm going to unfollow these people anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And once I follow three, uh, you'll see that uh, I can see a preview over here of the kind of tweets that I'm going to get, and Twitter also allows me to go on to the next step. So you only have to follow uh, three, and you can go to the next step. Now Twitter's going to want you to follow even more people. They want you to do this because they want you to keep using Twitter. And if you're not following anybody on Twitter, it's really not very useful. So they want to get you following some people. But again, uh, you don't have to feel locked into the people that you follow at this step. Uh, on this screen, again, you could search for specific people to follow. Uh, if you don't really know who you're going to follow yet, you can just go into one of these categories. And again, once again, follow some of the suggested people is what we're going to do here with the intention that, you know what, we're going to unfollow these people anyway uh, once we get our account created. So I'm going to go ahead and follow three of the suggested people from Twitter. And once I follow three more, now I've got six total people that I'm following, Twitter will allow me to go uh, to the next step. So. On the next step, what we have is uh, another way to get connected with even more people on Twitter, and that's to search your contacts in your email, uh, either your Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, or uh, America Online AOL. You don't have to do this. There's a way to skip this step. It could be useful for you if you have a lot of professional connections in your Gmail address book. You could go ahead and search those contacts and then potentially follow uh, those people. But you know what? I'm going to skip that step for now. Um, and I do that just by going down here to the bottom and clicking skip. And now I'm to the point where I can set up uh, my uh, particular uh, Twitter profile. And this is important as well. Remember, we're going to be using this account professionally, so we want to make sure that people can connect with a professional person on the other end of this. And one of the most important things that you can do when you first create, create your Twitter account is to get a profile picture up. And you do that here just by clicking Upload Image, and that's going to open up a uh, a browse screen on your computer and you can browse through your photos and find a uh, professional picture of yourself and select it and click open and that image is going to go ahead and be uploaded uh, to your uh, Twitter profile um, and you can see some of the effective uh, effective uh, pictures over here uh, in your preview of Danny Masterson and Kevin Spacey it, it shows their face it is an actual picture of them not a picture of their cat or a picture of a cupcake that they enjoyed but a picture of them and when we're using this professionally that's important to get a face that goes along with the name and also what you can do here is to go ahead and put in your bio um, and once again, you want to uh, connect that with your professional uh, profile and your professional reputation uh, online. You are limited here to 160 characters, and you can see Twitter will uh, count that down for you. Uh, and I'm just getting a few things in here. One of the other things to uh, fig to uh, think about in your bio is that keywords that you use in your bio, if people are searching for people to follow on Twitter uh, and they search for, uh, you know, cooperative extension, for instance, um, if you have cooperative extension in your bio, then that potentially uh, will, your account will potentially come up uh, in terms of people to follow. So upload your, your image, your profile picture, uh, include your bio, and then just click the done button. And there we go. Uh, we've got our Twitter profile set up. Now I had a little bit of trouble uploading my image. Um, I'm sure yours will work will work fine. You can get that uploaded. But now you've got your Twitter account. You can see you have a box up here at the top that asks you to confirm your email address. That's very easy to do. Just go to the email uh, address, go to the email program and, and for the address that you used and you'll have a message there. Click the link in the message and that will confirm your email address for this account. And now now, to get rid of those people that we followed, uh, in order to get our account set up, what we're going to do is go to following here and just go down here. Here's all the people that we followed, and we just start clicking unfollow. And now we've unfollowed those people, and we can go ahead and start finding people to follow who will actually help us in our professional development. 
Okay, so we've unfollowed all of those uh, people that uh, we followed just to get through the account creation uh, process. So our timeline is empty and we're not really seeing anybody uh, to follow. So if you want to find some people to follow, one way to do that is to go ahead and start to search for things that are of interest uh, to you. And there's a couple of different tools uh, that you can, or a couple of different uh, terms or ways to use terms to search. One is just to, you know, search for particular terms. Let's take gardening, for instance. Okay, so if I, I search gardening, here are all the tweets, the actual messages that have the word gardening in them, and there's a lot of them, and not all of them have to do with gardening. But if I look up here at the top left, you can see I can also look at people who have uh, gardening either in their Twitter name uh, or uh, in their uh, bio. And that's why putting those keywords in your bio is important so you can help to find people. So now I can look through here and see uh, you know, if there's someone that I'm interested in following. If I'm not sure based on the name uh, and the bio, I can actually click on that account and look at the kinds of tweets that they're sending and see if those messages might be useful uh, to me. And once I find somebody uh, who uh, might be sharing information that I can use professionally, that I'm interested in, uh, all I have to do is go ahead and click the follow button uh, next to their account. And now that I've done that, when I go back up here to home, now you'll see I have tweets uh, in my timeline here. Um, uh, based on uh, who I'm following. Another way to search for people uh, to follow is to actually, instead of just using a term like gardening, you can use what's called a Twitter hashtag. And what a hashtag is, is if you look right over here under trends on the left hand side, you'll see this little pound sign in front of those uh, in front of those words and what that pound sign does is sets those words apart so that uh, those are keyed in as key words right so that you're not just uh, randomly including that word in your tweet you've actually added it as a hashtag which really tells people hey this tweet is about this so instead of just uh, looking for gardening let's try pound sign gardening Okay, now that we're not just looking for the word gardening, we're looking for the hashtag gardening. And this might actually lead us, if we look at these tweets, um, to uh, people to follow who actually tweet about gardening and we know that they're talking about gardening because they've included this hashtag and so if I look at somebody like Teresa Watkins here and I look at their tweets and say hey this looks like stuff that I'm interested in then I can just follow them and now I've found someone else uh, to follow uh, on Twitter so if you're watching this uh, because you want to start tweeting uh, around our fall conference at NDSU, um, we use a hashtag for our NDSU uh, Fall Conference 2012, and that hashtag is pound sign NDSU CONF for conference 2012. So NDSU Conference 2012, NDSU CONF 2012 with the hashtag in front of it. And when you type that into the search box up here and click enter, now you're going to see all the tweets that use that hashtag. And now you can see I sent a tweet. Um, using that hashtag, so to Glenn Muskie, those are two people that you might want to follow. They're both really cool and uh, tweet really interesting stuff. And so you can click on the name. And when that loads, click follow. Close that one. Same thing with Glenn, click on the name. When that loads, click follow. So that's really all there is to it in terms of getting uh, following. Now the last thing that we want to do with just about uh, 45 seconds left in this video is for you to tweet. So all you need to do to tweet is click up here where it says compose new tweet and type your tweet. You're limited to 140 characters. And if you do decide to tweet, uh, why don't you include that conference hashtag if you're doing it for the NDSU extension REC fall conference 2012 and that way other people will be able to find you as a new Twitter user uh, in NDSU extension service or uh, NDSU egg experiment station. I hope this has helped you get started on Twitter. If you have any questions please feel free to contact me. Thanks.